Every year since 1971, the Danish town of Roskilde has been hosting the Northern Europe's biggest rock music event, the Roskilde Music Festival. And this year's festival was headlined by Bruce Springsteen and his E Street Band. The rock legends didn't fail to impress the huge crowd of fans in front of the orange stage at the center of the festival. With the 2012 edition of Denmark's Roskilde Festival closing on Sunday, music critics and reviewers said the event delivered a host of sterling performances and a crop of upcoming stars. In all, 200 bands, mainly from Europe and the U.S., performed a variety of musical genres on nine concert stages over the course of the four-day event. Aside from Springsteen, other leading performers included British alternative rock group The Cure, Icelandic singer-songwriter Bjork, and Danish hip-hop sensation Malk de Queen. According to Denmark's leading music magazine, the festival was superior to last year's as it featured more big names on the Orange Concert Arena, which can hold 60,000 spectators. The arena was packed to capacity when Springsteen set the evening alight with hits like Dancing in the Dark and Twist and Shout, delving deep into the rock and folk music tradition that has made him a musical superstar for over four decades. Uh, even though uh, he's been, uh, maybe a lot of people have seen him before because he visits uh, Denmark regularly and he plays a lot of shows and he always plays uh, very long shows uh, with the uh, Eastway band and they are very energetic and uh, raw and uh, so it wasn't a probably a surprise uh, but I think uh, after all I think most people will think that he was the, the main man of this year. Eight other smaller stages held performances that included rock and roll to hip hop. This blend of different music styles is an important part that makes Roskilde Festival one of the highest ranked music festivals in Northern Europe. There's always crazy sounds and there's too much of this and too little of that, but I think in general there's, you know, there's pop, there's rock, there's heavy. Okay, there's been uh, not very much heavy metal uh, this year. There's machine who just played, but there's not been many metal bands this year, not many big metal bands. That's maybe a uh, kind of something I, I, I miss a bit, but there's some good hip-hop acts, some good electronic acts, some good pop and rock and also world music, so uh, in general I think it's, it's pretty good. The festival is a non-profit event with several hundreds of volunteers that make everything work. We are um, a non-profit festival. Uh, all our benefits are given further on to humanitarian cultural purposes. And I think, and we are built up by volunteers, and that gives this festival a very special feeling. Uh, the people that are here working um, give experiences, uh, and they, uh, they are here to make a difference for the your audience that is here. And I think as an audience, that is what you feel, uh, and that is what you recognize. And that uh, makes people here um, uh, much more engaged, not just in what they do here and the way they do things, but also in each other. Many music goers start to come to the site several days before the main event actually takes place to camp on one of the many lots. In the tent village, music fans enjoy time with their families and friends before joining the event, where there is no consideration of age or origin. And if you look around, you don't see uh, you see all ages here, and I think it, that, that's a tradition for this. It's a festival which is over 40 years old, so there is a tradition. And I think also if you're thinking about this, it's a, a, a new town, 77,000 people, it's, it's a huge in, in Nordic. And they're living together for one week, and it's very peaceful here. It's a fantastic place to, to be creative and meet new people. You're, you're open here, and it's a fantastic place to be. The festival was fortunate this year to avoid the heavy summer rain showers that often have plagued the event. There was also no violent disruptions or incidents to mar the event, which is famous for its peaceful and friendly atmosphere. Festival organizers learned a grave lesson 12 years ago after a tragic event where nine people died after being crushed in the middle of the crowd. I think every festival learned a lot from that incident. Roskilde Festival was considered one of the safest festivals even at that time. Um, but we learned that, um, well, you can always improve crowd safety. But, and one of the things, for instance, is building up the, uh, the pitch areas in front of the stage. But uh, it's also uh, um, 
creating a network with other festivals and, as I said, universities. And actually, some of the research that's been done is not just used at festivals. It's also used, for instance, at football matches. So everything is done in an effort for people to enjoy music as they did Saturday night when Bruce Springsteen held the audience in his sweaty hands. Roskilde Festival closed Sunday once again as a success. A success that people are already looking forward to being a part of again next year. There's a very high uh, level of tolerance and openness to, towards others here. So this is a festival where you can actually, although there are so many people here, although they're that uh, tight together when they're living here, you can always feel safe because people look out for each other and you can actually go here alone and just meet new friends. And I think that is a very uh, huge explanation for our success.